Hello and welcome to Nikolai's Genetics Lessons and in this video I am going to give you an overview of the major protein sorting pathways in eukaryotes. Here you see nucleus. In the nucleus we can find the whole genome of the uh, eukaryotic organism and DNA would be transcribed and messenger RNA would be made which would leave nucleus through nuclear pore. And here is the messenger RNA and in cytosol there are numerous ribosomes which consist of small subunit and large subunit and these ribosomes would attach to this messenger RNA and for example this messenger RNA has 5 prom end here and 3 prom end here how do I know? because messenger RNA always made from 5 prom end to 3 prom end and also ribosomes read it from 5 prom end to 3 prom end and as you see this ribosome has polypeptide which is much longer than this one that means that this ribosome moved from this direction to this direction and made this polypeptide and this ribosome just attached and as you see the sequence of the amino acids is shorter than this one so 5 from and here and 3 from and here as you see messenger RNA can be simultaneously read by multiple ribosomes so this is not the same ribosome in different stages there are multiple ribosomes that attach to the messenger RNA and produce polypeptide simultaneously after polypeptide chain would consist about 30 amino acids we can see two scenarios whether this polypeptide chain would be continue to produce in the cytosol and would be folded in the cytosol and we call such protein cytosolic protein and also here we can find sequence which we call recognition sequence signal sequence which would signal that such ribosome have to attach to the rough endoplasmic reticulum and in this case this uh, process of uh, making polypeptide would continue on the rough endoplasmic reticulum and polypeptide chain would go inside the endoplasmic reticulum and would be folded inside of the endoplasmic reticulum also can go through the Golgi complex proteins would be modified folded here and then would be secreted from the cell so we call this secretory pathway but also there can be different variants how this uh, proteins can be folded for example some of them can go in the certain organelles such as mitochondria or for example peroxisome or if it is a cell of the plant then can go in the chloroplast and can fold inside the chloroplast on this picture you see cytosol and endoplasmic reticulum so these structures is endoplasmic reticulum and as you see there are a number of the ribosomes attached to it making the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum rough so we call this rough endoplasmic reticulum and there are a lot of also ribosomes in the cytosol so we can call them free ribosomes when messenger RNA leaves nucleus it goes in the cytosol and if you think that this is just random process uh, that such messenger RNA can randomly attach to the ribosome on the surface of the endoplasmic reticulum or to the ribosome in the cytosol this is not true free floating parts of the ribosome large subunit and small subunit which are present in the cytosol would assemble around messenger RNA and would start producing polypeptide when first between 15 and 30 amino acids would be made this would specify the fate of this polypeptide for example if we can find here amino acids on the very end which are positively charged and next would be about 15 up to 30 amino acids which are going to be hydrophobic then 
the fate of such ribosome with polypeptide attached would be to go to the endoplasmic reticulum and would attach to a protein which make a pore and then translation of this messenger RNA would go inside of the endoplasmic reticulum lumen and this polypeptide chain would be folded inside of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The signal here uh, is not a specific sequence of the amino acids. Again, it just have to follow certain uh, rules that first few amino acids have to be positively charged and the rest have to be hydrophobic. And scientists made different experiments, for example, inserting in this region of 30 amino acids, just one amino acid that was negatively charged and such polypeptide chain were folded in the cytosol and didn't go in order to be translated and folded into the endoplasmic reticulum lumen. And also they made different experiments, for example, when messenger RNA specifies uh, protein, which have to be folded in the cytosol, but they added 30 amino acid that specifies a signal that such a protein have to be folded in the endoplasmic reticulum, then such ribosome would attach to this protein pore and such protein would be made and folded in the endoplasmic reticulum lumen and also would be secreted from the cell. And probably some of you may ask what if this polypeptide chain have a signal but polypeptide chain would be much longer for example 100 amino acids would be translated from this messenger RNA. In this case such polypeptide start to fold into the cytosol and cannot go through this pore in the endoplasmic reticulum anymore and would be completely finished and folded in the cytosol and wouldn't be able to go in the endoplasmic reticulum and wouldn't be able to be secreted from the cell. So signal recognition is a very fast process and takes only milliseconds when such signal would be detected, such ribosome have to be attached to this uh, pore within milliseconds. Scientists conducted a number of experiments as shown for example on this picture in order to define the secretory pathway for proteins. And here is the endoplasmic reticulum. They took a cell, pancreatic anisar cells, because they produce a lot of proteins which they secrete. The cells were incubated briefly with radio-labeled amino acids, so only newly synthesized proteins become labeled, so would incorporate this radioactive amino acids. One more time, the goal was to separate proteins that were pre-existing to this experiment and to find those proteins which incorporated this radio-labeled amino acids so we can be sure that these amino acids were made as a result of this experiment and after we started this experiment and not before. And the goal of such experiment was to find the order of events in this secretory pathway of the protein production. First cells were homogenized. How we can do it? We can do it with, for example, ultrasound or laser. Fracturing PM, which stands for the plasmic membrane and sharing the endoplasmic reticulum into the small vesicles, which we call microsomes. What is a microsome? This is just a small portion of the endoplasmic reticulum, which consists of the bilipid layer with proteins incorporated in its surface. So it's just represent a small portion of the endoplasmic reticulum. Because microsomes have bound ribosomes, microsomes have higher biont density than other membranous organelles and can be separated from the rest. Then these microsomes were digested with protease. Protease would uh, cut only protein uh, with 
presence or absence of the detergent. Detergent would destroy this uh, bilipid layer. And if it is, would be destroyed, then the proteins also would be cut to small pieces. But if we do not apply detergent and only add protease, then we still can see the folded proteins inside these microsomes. So this experiment shows that microsomes, which represent small version of the endoplasmic reticulum, rough endoplasmic reticulum, are the sites of the protein synthesis. And internal space of the microsomes is equal to or equivalent of the lumen of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And this picture describes yet another experiment in which scientists define the order of events that took cell-free system. So we have cytosol, messenger RNA, and ribosomes, and they use such messenger RNA that at the end terminus specifies that it have to go to the endoplasmic reticulum, rough endoplasmic reticulum, in order to be folded. But the cell-free system didn't have endoplasmic reticulum nor it had microsomes. And what happened in this case? In this case, this messenger RNA was translated into the protein which was folded in the cytosol. A second stage of this experiment to the cell-free system, microsomes were added and microsomes represent a small version of the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And as you see, nothing happened. So these proteins didn't go inside of these microsomes because they were folded, even though they had a signal sequence here that they have to be folded inside a microsome. So this experiment showed that if these proteins whose fate to be uh, folded in the uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum would pass certain threshold event. As I said earlier, it is about 30 amino acids. So if 30 amino acids would be synthesized by ribosome and within this time limit, this ribosome wouldn't be attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, then such protein wouldn't be able to penetrate rough endoplasmic reticulum later to be folded inside and to be secreted. And here's a second part of this experiment when scientists added messenger RNA, ribosomes, and also microsomes at the same time. In this case, such messenger RNA were translated into the polypeptide sequence. And after synthesis of the first 30 amino acids with a signal that specifies that such protein have to be folded inside the rough endoplasmic reticulum, such ribosome would attach to the protein pore on the surface of the microsome and full translation is going to happen on the ribosome and polypeptide chain would go through the pore inside the endoplasmic reticulum or microsome in this case and it's going to be folded inside and as you see signal sequence is usually cut away and folded protein just don't have the sequence which is usually between 15 and 30 amino acids and mature folded protein is going to miss this signal sequence and this is all for today subscribe and see you in the next video goodbye